this is the most irresponsible, nonsensical thing that we are doing to the residents of Connecticut today with this legislation. Okay. But what I'm not gonna accept is Democrats on that committee to say we have no other choice, we are required to vote yes. We are saying today there are options by statute. You could reject and send it to the assembly or you could approve it. But don't pun it and take a cop out that you have to vote yes because of some weird procedure. Tell that to the people that can't afford these mandates when they come down. I think everybody in this room today and anyone watching uh, realizes one of their biggest bills is their electric bill. And with a, as Representative Candelora mentioned, with a two point, two and a half billion dollar price tag to try and make the grid uh, uh, have the capacity to do this will add even more to your uh, monthly bill. Not to mention, if you have a heavy duty truck that weighs considerably more, costs four times as much and has half the range and can't carry about a third less capacity, what's gonna do to your uh, grocery bills? The people out there should be worried because if this goes through, your electric bill goes up, your grocery bill goes up, and to, and to what end? Is this going to really uh, affect the environment in Connecticut that much? Everyone behind you is, here is concerned with the environment and clean air. And on the Environment Committee, we deal with it every, every day. But the problem is, right now, that where's the generating capacity in Connecticut? It's fossil fuels. Or they just pulled out uh, offshore wind, they pulled out of there because interest rates, there's no profit in it. So until we have a way to lower people's electric bills, so they perhaps want to buy an electric vehicle, and, and as I said in meetings with DEP, if these are so great, why do you have to mandate them? And what are you going to do when there's a busy day in I-95 and you've got backups all the way down the uh, entrance ramps to get into the rest areas to try and charge? What's it take everyone in the room? Three, five minutes to gas up their car? And now you're going to sit for 40 minutes on a hot or a cold day with three little kids in the car? What are you going to do? It's just not feasible right now. We this is going to affect every resident, every business throughout the entire state of Connecticut. And in reference um, to New Britain and DACO building out that infrastructure, my understanding is that it's going to take Eversource, if they put the shovel in the ground today, eight years just to improve the grid in New Britain for those buses. So while we could say it's 12 years off, 12 years goes pretty quick when you need to invest $2.5 billion in an infrastructure. I mean, look at, look at how long the tree removal is taking uh, for the storm responses throughout the state of Connecticut. For me, I get about 12 to 15 to 1 for my constituents who are opposed to this to those who support this concept. Part of that's because there is no roadmap. We know where we want to go, but there's no roadmap to get there. The commissioner's response to me, me when I was concerned about this timeline is, well, we could just adjust it and repeal the timeline. I think government is the last entity, especially in the state of Connecticut, that provides certainty to any business. I mean, just ask them. Do they feel comfortable running their businesses in the state of Connecticut? I mean, surprise, we may have predictive scheduling next year for everybody. So I, I, don't, I don't think businesses rely on what government has to say. I think they work around government, despite government. And yes, electric vehicles are moving forward, and they will continue to, to, to. We are not saying put a halt to it, but let the market work itself out. Let the market figure out how we're going to get coach buses to work where you could actually put your luggage in it when you travel. I mean, every time you have this conversation with people, you hear more and more amazing stories that you didn't think of. And I would also just say to the Democrats on the Reg 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 Review Committee, Come out and state your position on how you're going to vote, and then listen to what people have to say in response to how you're going to vote. Because I suspect a yes vote is going to have a very interesting public response. We have a, a system, an electric grid right now, where you have transformers outside your house. Those are meant to cool at night. You start plugging in electric vehicles, what happens to transformers? Poof. So it, then the towns are going to start limiting what streets can charge and what, what times. And part of their plan is if we all plug in our electric vehicles, they're going to borrow power back and forth from uh, the battery packs in your cars. There is no plan in pl place here forcing the people of Connecticut into this very expensive uh, option. I, I see it as a kind of a reverse Robin Hood because we have to subsidize the vehicles, we have to su subsidize the, the grid, and it's forcing our middle and lower class to, uh, to bear the brunt of the cost. And until we have a real system where we can get cheap, 
clean electricity in, in Connecticut, you're simply trading tailpipe for smokestack. Let the market start working. They're still trying to figure it out. Why the heck is government stepping in and imposing all these artificial mandates for very little return on emissions in the state of Connecticut? Yes, we've heard from, uh, from the energy leadership as well as from the governor's office about the three-legged stool. Everybody remembers the three-legged stool, right? We talk about uh, reliability and dependability of the grid combined with a green grid and making that financially solvent for everyone. We're, we're sitting on one leg here. And that might be the biggest problem. We don't have a grid that can support it. And fiscally, this number is already going through the roof. It's only getting higher. When you think about that piece of it, the infrastructure needs to be upgraded now. Imagine how much more that goes through it, right? How much more energy we have to push through it. We can't produce that much energy on the grid and the system we have can't support it. So my question would be, how do we fix that stool from sitting on one leg? We cannot impose such a mandate on our communities. We have an obligation to protect their choice. And finally, these are coming before the Regs Review Committee on November 28th. And we hear again that the committee is limited to looking at the legal sufficiency of these regulations. Last I saw, I thought it was the Attorney General that reviews that scope. And when you look at the statute, the Regs Review Committee is free to adopt to approve, to disapprove, or reject without prejudice. So they full are within their discretion to take a pause on these regulations and vote no. So we can have the conversation in the legislature of do we want California or do we want to follow the vast majority of states in this country and go the federal route and protect our residents.